Nigerian-born Emeka Obu says a lifelong fascination with sound began with primitive instruments he made as a boy. Well, like uh, empty cans, you put stones in it and, it and kind of like hit the end, it becomes like a rattle. Or also you get a, a big can of milk powder, empty ones. You put a plastic sheet over it and tie it hard, then it becomes like a kind of drum. Well, you know, I was also thinking about trying to create... Young Emeka also loved to draw on paper, on walls. He even made his own comics. Those were the early indications that Ogbo was headed towards a career as a multimedia artist. He started making a name for himself in the art world, creating installation pieces that incorporated the sounds of his hometown of Lagos. Cars, buses, taxis, and people hawking their wares in the middle of rush hour. Most people would hear this as noise. I, I, I no longer use the term noise. I mean, noise is really like something people find unpleasant. I don't find it unpleasant anymore. I found music. I found a symphony in this so-called city, city noises, you know. The artist's ability to fill large gallery spaces with compelling sound and imagery attracted the attention of curators at the Cleveland Museum of Art who commissioned him to produce a piece for the vast three-story atrium space that bridges the museum's original 1916 building with a 1971 addition. I can still remember the expression on his face when he walked into the atrium for the first time because as everybody says about this space, you see pictures, you see plans, you have no idea what the space will feel like. So I remember walking into the space and I'm thinking like, wow, what did I get myself into? But Ogwo's eyes quickly moved from the glass roof to the floor below where people were walking, lounging, and talking at tables. It reminded him of an ama, or village square, back home in Nigeria. He started sketching some ideas. These village squares normally have a tree. The main function of the tree is to provide like shade. So um, I wanted to bring a tree to this place. He designed a 30-foot tree made of steel and aluminum, which was recently installed at one end of the atrium. Covering the tree is a brown and orange quilt that hugs the trunk and branches like bark. It's uh, one of the oldest uh, textile tradition in West Africa. It's made by the women of Akweta. Akweta is, uh, Akweta is a village in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria. And the women, they often learn the trade from their mothers. I wanted to create a sculptural tree that is also covered in Akweta to symbolize my culture, my roots, where I come from. So the tree is covered entirely in a quarter piece, and also around the atrium you're going to find uh, bean bags and poofs covered in a quarter. Some of the women will claim that they actually, the design patterns come to them while they're dreaming. <laughs> Adding to the atmosphere of this metaphorical village square is the sound of a specially recorded choir singing folk songs from the ethnic Igbo culture. I've done some work with choirs and I started thinking it would be a cool idea to also bring the Igbo folk songs to this space. For hundreds of years, Western museums have procured pieces of world culture and put it on display. The art museum's Emily Liebert says the old ways are changing. I think one of the things that's happening is the objects are being divorced from their original uses. So, for example, something that's a mask that's worn um, for a sacred performance is then put on a pedestal inside a glass box for pure observation. There's not that disconnect here. For the next four months, the feel of a traditional Nigerian gathering place will fill a space where contemporary Clevelanders gather. They can look up at a giant tree, touch a handcrafted textile that covers its surface, Feels great. and listen to the sounds of a choir singing old folk songs. And one Friday night, Emeka Ogbo also brought a taste of more contemporary African music to the museum. Music is something we can all connect to. We all connect to rhythm, we all connect to these movements, and it makes us free. It's kind of an opening of a dialogue, so we all connect to music, no matter where we're from. Another way to break down some old cultural walls, a demonstration that we're all part of one world. <laughs> 